Hello everyone, this is Johannes and you are watching Board Gaming Ramblings and today we are taking a look at the game I've been looking forward to. It is Carpe Diem from Stefan Feld. He is one of my favorite designers of all time. Even though his game has been a bit ups and some downs, some games I really didn't like. You can watch my Merlin review to see how I enjoyed his game from last year. Spoiler alert, I didn't like it. So I was really, really, really kind of nervous, kind of not sure what I should expect of his two new games coming out at Essen Spiel this year. I'm really, really happy to be able to play Carpe Diem already. I played it quite a few times and I'm ready to tell you what I think about this new game from Stefan Feld. Before we do that, let's go do a quick overview of the rules and then we come back and see what I think about this game. So, let's take a quick look on how we play Carpe Diem. It's a pretty straightforward game, I'm not going to go into any details, but I'm going to tell you briefly how you are going to play this game. The game is played over four rounds. Every round you're going to take seven turns moving your meeple across this piece of place. I'm doing this again. Let's just take a quick overlook on how you play Carpe Diem. In Carpe Diem you are going to play 4 rounds. In each round you're going to take 7 turns moving your meeple, taking tiles and adding them to your player board. After all the tiles are gone from the marketplace or whatever you want to call it, you are going to do a scoring phase with these cards right here, choosing 2 cards to score and hopefully get some points. After you have done that 4 times you're going to have a final scoring and after that if you are the person who have gotten the most points out of this game, you are the winner. So let's start with the first thing you are going to do, which is the main part of the game. Every time it's my turn, I'm going to move my meeple one of two spaces uh, depending on these lines. So I can from here this space move here and I can move here. After I move my meeple, I can take one of the tiles from that space and put it on my player board over here. The first piece I put, I have to put on this shovel place right here. And after that, I have to place everything adjacent to something that's already there. And everything has to match. So I cannot place this water like this, doesn't match. I can place it like this, for example. The frame of your player board is also grass. So that means that you cannot place a half done building outside like this. So you are going to continue doing this moving and taking pieces. Sometimes you are going to complete some uh, different uh, buildings and different landscapes to get some bonuses. There are four types of landscapes which will give you different resources. They can be from two to four pieces long. So you can either have this which is two pieces or you can have a third one in between or a fourth one. Then you will get uh, X minus one resources depending on the number of tiles. So if you have two, that's two minus one. So that's one and so on. There are also four different buildings of different colors that will give you different bonuses. I will briefly explain what the bonuses are and we can talk briefly about how, what you use them for. The gray building will make you go two spaces on this track up here. The brown building will give you two bread resources. The yellow building will get you to sell all your resources and get money for them. You get one coin for each resource and a bonus coin for completing the building. And the green building gives you an extra piece that you can take from this line down here. You will take that extra piece and add it to your board. Other than that, there's three buildings that are just a one tile building. You have a bakery that looks like this. It gives you a bread piece. You have uh, this, um, I don't remember what it's called, merchant stall, I think, which gives you a golden coin. And then you have the fountain, which will give you a fountain card. You will draw two fountain cards, look at them. These are personal missions that will give you two points every time you have this thing at the top of the card. You will look at two, take one and discard the other one. Next time, you can, will, if you build another fountain, you will draw two cards and then discard one of the three cards. You can draw the one you had from before or one of the ones you just drew. And that are all the different buildings except for the villas. The villas are the orange buildings with the chimneys and if you complete that it will give you points at the end of the game. When you complete it you don't get any bonus and you can also use the chimneys for some scoring during the scoring round. And that are all the buildings in the game. So let's go to the scoring round. After the players have taken seven, um, seven tiles each and the tiles are gone, you are going to go over here and look at the order. So if I am in first place, I will choose what cards to score first. 
And the way this works is I will put my piece between two cards and score both of those cards. I have to, with the green cards, either have something and the red cards I have to pay something. And I will get the bonus either coins or bread or going up on this space or most of the time I will get victory points. If I cannot score a card it will give me negative 4 points, if I cannot score both cards it will give me negative 8 points. The pieces will then be, my disc will then be here oh, and there will be other discs from other players and during the game there will be fewer and fewer places to choose to score from. And that is basically what you're gonna do in the game. At the end of the game there's a final scoring that works like this. First off you get, uh, for every two resources you still have you get a point, then you get a point for each step you went on this track. Then you get point for these different uh, marks out of your frame. You can try to build so that these match with finished buildings and landscapes on your board. That will give you points. Then you score your fountain cards and you will score your finished villas. The more chimneys you have in a villa, the more points you will get. At the end of that, the player with the most points is the winner of Carpe Diem. As usual, let's start with the components for the game. This is a game from Ravensburger and Alia. That means that usually the components aren't really that good. And if there's something I should say about this game as negative, it's that the components are okay. I don't mind because I enjoy this kind of Euro, dry Euro component that doesn't really need to be flashy or blingy or anything. I like it. It looks like Ravensburger has tried to kind of evolve how the components and the artwork looks. And I really, really like that. My copy of the game had some misalignments of the printing printing of the game the punch boards were kind of wrong so sometimes when you put together two pieces to make a building they didn't match at all and i could see that afterwards on the on the bread tiles and on the uh, the coins it's a minor problem for me i don't know if that's the case in all the copies but in my copy it was kind of slightly misaligned that way doesn't change the gameplay just wanted to say it so if you get a copy that's that way as well you know that it's not just you I want to talk briefly about the bread components because I had no idea what this was. It doesn't look like bread to me at all. After after I know it's bread and I'm watching it again, I can't see that it might be bread. But there's so many ways to make bread look like bread that doesn't look like dry orange, which it's supposed to actually looks like. I was like, oh, this is a cool resource. It's bread. Okay, it doesn't make sense. But yeah. These are some minor, minor things because I, I really needed to find something and that I really needed to, but I, I thought I should find something to say as well that was not so positive. One thing I really have to say about the graphics and the design of the uh, components is that the color of the yellow and the color of the brown buildings are not really different enough. It's it's a problem, especially around the edges of the player board, the, the brown where you, where you get scoring for different buildings you build in that space. The brown looks kind of yellow, the yellow looks more yellow when you see it together with the brown, but if you only have brown and you don't have any yellow, it's hard to see if it's yellow or brown. So I think those two buildings would have been better off if they were a little bit less alike. Uh, and really depends of course on your sight and all that stuff, but for me and all of the players we played through, those that, that was the only graphical thing we had a problem with. Except for one other thing and that is... In this game you have two different tiles, you have the light green ones and the dark green ones. Those are kind of, they're not identical, but they're, if you don't see them together it's hard to see and you really have to look for when, you, when you're sorting the tiles, look for what is the light grey and what light green and what is the dark green. They could have been black for any case because you don't ever see the back of them, it doesn't need to be like a green grass color, so one could be light green and the other could be black and it would be much easier to sort and much easier to sort of after the game it's a minor thing but it's a thing i wanted to say because that's what i do in reviews i say things i think about games that's kind of the whole point so that's components it's a euro game components work we don't need to talk about that let's talk about the gameplay this is a kind of a, a, a lighter game uh, the box says it's a four of five four of ten of complexity whereas cost of the burgundy is a five of ten Castle of Burgundy is my favorite Stefan Fell game and it is one of the mo my, my favorite games of all time. And how does this compare to that? It's, it's lighter, but it has some really, really interesting mechanisms that I <laughs> adore. I love this game. So, I'm saying that right now. The gameplay of this game is fantastic. It's really, really simple. You move a dude, you take that piece, you put it into your 
into your board carcassonne style trying to you know, have to match all the sides trying to to complete buildings to get bonuses to to have more possibilities to score points it's really different because usually in a lot of Stefan Feld's uh, games there is this feeling of a point salad it doesn't really feel like a point salad there's many ways to get points but when i think about point salad i think about i do this action i get three points i do this action i get two points that's not two that's one i get one point and then another point that's two points and so on and so forth in this game you only get points during the scoring rounds and there's a huge end of the game scoring as well so you have to plan you have to work to wait work towards these different scorings to actually score the points and these scoring cards are the most really really cool mechanism of this game it will change every game you play because you will have to uh, you will shuffle the cards and do different cards every time you play and depending on what the other players go for you can either try to be really high on this bandolier uh, track to be able to choose the scoring cards first or you can try to be diverse and have lots of gold coins and lots of bread so you can score whatever and trying to to score these points is is important but it doesn't really break the game if you don't get a lot of points in that manner because it's such a huge part of the points of this game is the end game scoring you can get screwed if you get lots of negative points you don't really want that so to stand floating is like the most important thing if you can do a great move and get lots of points if the card work and you are first and you have all the resources that's great but the most important thing is to be floating to not score those negative points you will probably score some in the beginning of the game maybe when you're playing the game and you're like okay i'm getting this tile this tile this tile and then remember that you're going to try to score something after the first seven tiles it's hard to get lots of resources, lots of coins, lots of bread in those first seven rounds. So that's not gonna be really, really easy. It's really... The thing I really love about this game is that it's so simple to teach. Like, the buildings are really, really easy. It's not like Castle Bergen, it's hard to teach simply because there's 11 different buildings that you have to remember what all of them do. It is on the player board, of course, but it's hard to remember all those different buildings. Here it's just couple of different things you get small bonuses whenever you complete something you try to build your way up to getting points of the frame getting the points of a big villa getting the points from the fountain cards and all that stuff so when i talk about fountain cards that's really interesting as well because most stefan fell game has this kind of luck element whereas you would roll dice use dice as a main mechanism uh, or you draw the cards in bruges which is a lot of luck in that game as well Carpe Diem doesn't really have a lot of luck. Um, the only really luck it has, of course, is a random setup and all that, but that's the same for everybody, and you know that before you do something. The only kind of luck thing you have here, or, or, or yeah, luck, randomness and luck, I, it's output and input randomness, but I don't remember which is which, that's why I don't say that. But drawing the fountain cards is the only thing that you can be like lucky and draw a card that you would really score lots of points of, or unlucky and draw nothing that you can get points for. But then again, you can score points in many ways and it doesn't really hinder the game. It's a good thing in the beginning if you can get a fountain and then run with that if that's possible. But then again, you can't really only get that thing because you also have to finish other stuff to score the points of the cards. Because if you don't score the card, scoring cards, you're not going to get enough points because you're going to lose points and all that. So in a way, this really light game feels like it has a lot to offer. It feels like there's many different paths to victory, many different things you can focus on, and you don't have to you don't have to do everything to score well. You can try different strategies. It really, really feels cool. Um, it's just fun. It's really, really fun. It's quick. So we're gonna play, talk now about player counts because then we go to quick. I played it two, three, and four players, which are all the player counts. At two players, like, and it's great that all player counts. Like, I love it at two and three and four. One of the reasons for that is that it doesn't take much longer with any of those player counts. At two players, it takes about 40 to 45 minutes. At three players, it's been an hour. And at four players, it's been an hour and 10 minutes. And that's great there's so much game here for an hour and 10 minutes like it's an amazing experience and this has been with with all new players all the time like in after a while a couple of us have played it but then most players have been new all the time i played it a fun beautiful great game that way like it's really quick you feel like you get a lot of game i love that getting an hour of gameplay and feeling like i really get so much out of that time 
the, the feeling, the, the decisions being meaningful, uh, there's interaction between the, the spots, of course, with more players, there are more players going around before you, so if you like more interaction, of course, more players gives more interaction. What I really, really like is that in most two and three player games, you would then like, you fill these, spa all the spa spaces around the, uh, the movement grid with, with four, four different tiles. In most games, you would do like, Oh, you only put three pieces there with three players or two with two players. Here you put four and then after uh, like, there's four pieces and when two of them are taken in a two-player game, the other two are taken out of the game. And if three of them are taken in a three-player game, the last one is taken out. I really like that because you you can also do that to hinder your enemies from... Or your enemies! Your enemies, your opponents from getting the tile that they want. And you can also use it to to help you, or you can all the mean the thing I mean to say is that all the tiles are coming out in play depending on the number of players. You can never sit and be screwed in a two-player game because that one thing that you wanted didn't come up enough and stuff like that. So all the tiles are in play with all players. It works at all player counts. It's it's amazing. It's a really good game. Replayability wise, I think this will have a, a pretty high replayability because there is 60 of these scoring cards you're only using. 8 to 12 of them in each game and those are going to be different from different stacks or four stacks of different scoring cards you're shuffling them you're putting them on the board that's different then you get the frames with the different scoring abilities for how you want to build that's different and the buildings are going to go off in different ways and stuff like that so i think i can play this game quite a few times and don't feel like it's going to be repetitive one of the reasons of course is that it's a quick game and yeah it's quick and it's fun and it feels of course they're gonna feel kind of the same, but you wanna do different things, depending especially on the scoring cards. And that's the main reason that I think this has a good replayability. So final thoughts, this game is fun. This game is really great. This is one, it's gonna end up in being like one of my, my favorite Stefan Fellow games of all time. I haven't really set down on ranked like how far it's gonna be. This is a fun game. If you are going to Essen Spiel next week, I really suggest you pick up a copy of this. It's a fun, quick, pretty light game, but it feels like there's enough here so that even though you like heavy games, you might have fun with this. I like heavy and light games aside, but this feels like a light to medium game with enough meat on the bone and enough fun stuff going on it's tense you want to get those buildings done people can take those buildings away from you and that's bad and you really have a lot of different things to think about and that's why i love carpe diem by stefan fell this has been and this is an amazing game and i cannot wait to play it more and that's it really i've been trying to find some negative things to say about the gameplay i had, as you know, some things to say about the, the components, but gameplay-wise, I can't really find something I didn't like. Um, for me, it's just fun. Everything about this game is fun. It's fun, 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 fun all the way through the bank. I love it. And that's the end of this review. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the review, please give us a thumbs up. Please comment with your thoughts. Are you looking forward to this game? Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, and you will see more videos coming soon. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Johannes. You've been watching Board Gaming Ramblings and bye bye.